Founded in 2003, the International Whitewater Hall of Fame and Museum was created to recognize and honor a diverse group of individuals who have made significant accomplishments in and contributions to the sport of whitewater. Those chosen are among a select few scattered all over the world whose accomplishments and contributions have been felt on a global scale, paving the way to what the community is today. Pioneer, Tony Prion. Tony Prion Sr. is one of our sport's most prolific industry pioneers. He started paddling in the late 1930s as a young boy near his home in Nova Gorica, present-day Slovenia. He was an active racer through this time, building boats and paddles for himself and many of the world's top racers and made his mark by winning the German Championships in 1958 and World Championships in 1959 in Downriver. His paddles, which he built at home, were the first to bear the Prion name. With the coming of fiberglass technologies, he saw the possibilities of free-form shaping kayaks and upon founding the Prion Kayak Company, he began a masterful career creating kayaks in ever-expanding variations and types. His boats dominated the world of racing from 1963 to 1996 with 50 slalom and downriver models winning more than 40 gold medals in the world championship competition. Until 1996, all Olympic champions paddled his boats. In 1982, Tony introduced the blow molding manufacturing process to kayak production and has built his production legacy on this strong and efficient process. Many innovative design elements like large keyhole cockpits and bulkheads and other innovations that broaden the accessibility of paddling for the public are standard in today's kayaks. His legacy includes expanding the sport's borders from river running and racing into the realm of extreme paddling, playboating, river touring, and open water paddling. Today, his sons, Tony Jr. and Jurgen, run the Prion Enterprise, but Tony Sr. is still at it, producing paddles, helping in boat design, and paddling more than most of us. He has inspired thousands of paddlers from novices to world champions and a half century later is still creating dreams for the next generation to come. Explorer, Walt Blackadar. Walt Blackadar, a doctor from Idaho, was one of the most pioneering whitewater paddlers the U.S. has ever seen up until his tragic death on Idaho's South Fork of the Payette in 1978. He started rafting the main salmon and middle fork in the early 1960s before taking up kayaking, experimenting on his own for the first few years. He brought a group of eastern paddlers out west to run the middle fork. While he made early runs of the Bruneau in 1968, Jar Bridge and portions of the North Fork in 1970, and South Fork of the Salmon in 1971, what really got his juices going was big water. When he first ran the Grand Canyon in 1970, he ran Lava Falls not once, but four times. All when just getting through alive was considered quite a feat. His style and technique for running big water still survives today. His famous run of the Alsac River in 1971 led to Sports Illustrated publishing his journal of the trip. His star rose quickly after that with more articles and ABC's American Sportsman producing a series of short films of the paddling doctor running the Colorado and Susitna. He was also very involved in establishing the River of No Return Wilderness, putting him at odds with loggers and miners who were his patients. But he weathered the pressure and saw the wilderness bill eventually pass. His impact on the sport is evident by the posthumous honor bestowed upon him by the Canadian government, which named the peak in the St. Elias Range rising above Turnback Canyon, Mount Blackadar. In 1994, 
Pocatello, Idaho, Ron Waters further immortalized him with the writing of Never Turn Back, The Life of Whitewater Pioneer Walt Blackadar, the title of which sums up his legacy. Champions Richard Fox Richard Fox is the most decorated slalom kayaker in the history of the sport, winning 10 world championship gold medals including 5 individual titles. He is one of the co-founders of the Canoe Slalom World Cup, helping to create a series of annual international whitewater slalom canoe and kayak competitions in at least two continents. Richard won the inaugural World Cup in 1988 and again in 1989 and 1991. He was an innovator of smooth slalom techniques emulated by many other elite paddlers and was known for his stroke drills, opening the discussion of training principles, fitness, stretching, and racing strategies. He designed a series of slalom kayaks and recreational boats and introduced the double torque kayak paddle to the sport during the 1989 World Championships. Often donating his equipment and gear to newly emerging paddlers, he remains one of slalom's finest ambassadors. Richard retired from slalom competition after winning the Worlds for a fifth time in 1998. He continued to share his training and racing expertise as head coach for the Australian 2000 Olympic team. He was appointed National Performance Director of Australian Canoeing in 2005 and is now responsible for the Australian Slalom and Flatwater High Performance Programs through to Beijing. There has never been an American team on an American river in front of American fans for a race like this. If anyone deserves a chance to experience the noise without making a mistake, it's Kathy Hearn. And she's covered the quarter mile clean, no penalties. And for the moment, she's in first place. Kathy Hearn. Kathy Hearn has earned a place as an International Whitewater Hall of Fame champion, having competed in more international races than any American paddler in the history of slalom, and serving as a U.S. national team coach after retiring from competition. Kathy began her two-decade winning career with an unprecedented three gold medals at the 1979 World Championships in Slalom, Slalom Team, and Wild Water Team events. She's always been extremely competitive in all disciplines, including C1, C2, wild water, and slalom. She has willingly shared her knowledge, coaching nationally and internationally, and is the current U.S. national coach working with C1 and C2 athletes. As with her brother Davey, she has put in more than 20 years on the U.S. kayak team, with Olympic appearances in 1992 and 1996. Far from lying in the slalom shadow of her brothers, she is truly a champion of the sport who continues to champion its success as slalom heads to the Beijing Games in 2008. Advocates Bill Endicott As the coach of the U.S. slalom team from 1977 to 1992, Bill Endicott has had more influence on the U.S. slalom scene than any other person in the world. He's championed the sport for 30 years and was the driving force behind helping secure its birth in the Olympics. A successful competitor in his own right, he was introduced to paddling as an undergraduate at Harvard. He quickly rose through the ranks to compete in the 1971 and 1973 World Championships in C2 and attended the 1972 Olympics as an alternate for the U.S. team. During his 15 years at the helm of the U.S. Canoe and Kayak Slalom Team, Bill coached athletes who won 57 medals in the World Cup, World Championship, and Olympic competition, a whopping 27 of them gold. Never one to steal the limelight, he naturally downplays his contributions. In preparation for the 1996 Olympic Games, Endicott took on the monumental task of organizing the kayaking event on Tennessee's Ocoee River right down to helping obtain the $12 million congressional appropriation to make it all possible. Bill has augmented his coaching experience as the author of five whitewater books, including The River Masters, A History of the World Championships of Whitewater Canoeing, and To Win the Worlds, a textbook for elite slalomnists and their coaches.
It's for these reasons and more that the International Whitewater Hall of Fame is proud to present him with the Advocate Award for 2007. William Neely Heralded as Whitewater's Poet Laureate, William Neely is one of the best-known ambassadors of the sport. A world-famous cartoonist, he is best known for his groundbreaking book, Kayak, A Manual of Technique, now translated into five languages, and published many articles, maps, and manuals on Whitewater. He illustrated two landmark squirt books written by squirt master Jim Snyder, The Squirt Book and Squirt Boating and Beyond which illustrated paddling movements and their interaction with water current. Before becoming a world famous cartoonist, he began drawing river maps of the more popular rivers in the southeastern U.S., including the Gali, Nu, Yakagani, Nolachucky, and other classic runs. A co-founder of Birmingham, Alabama's Menasha Ridge Press, he combined expert paddling instruction with artful caricature and parodies of paddlers themselves. Other landmark titles include Whitewater Home Companion, Kayaks to Hell, and Whitewater Tales of Terror, as well as his cult-like bicycle offerings, the Mountain Bike Way of Knowledge. He captured the essence of whitewater paddling and whitewater paddlers like no one ever has before, transcending the subject by leaps and bounds. His love for the whitewater community might best be described as warped, but we'll all smile a time or two in our lives because of it. When I first started boating, whitewater boating in the mid-70s, there was a lot of really different people, all pretty much united by this need or addiction to running dangerous rivers. I thought of rivers as the path of my excitement. You know, this is where I go to have a lot of fun. Because of these inductees, contributions, and accomplishments, the Whitewater community has been forever changed for the better. It is with great honor that these inductees are welcomed into the International Whitewater Hall of Fame. These 2007 honorees have already made a mark in their respective disciplines and spheres of influence. Now, as members of the International Whitewater Hall of Fame, they will be remembered and appreciated as role models for future generations of whitewater paddlers worldwide.